mulero, opa mulero, opa mulero, opa mulero, opa mulero, sidi. religion has become an international religion. There are more people espousing Yoruba religion outside Nigeria today than there are in Yoruba land in Nigeria. Let me give you an example. In the province of Bahia in Brazil, a province that is a Roman Catholic province. There are more Yoruba centers of worship today than there are Roman Catholic churches. Almost everybody who is a Roman Catholic is also a worshiper of Ogun or Ja or Yemaja or Oshun and so on. And Yoruba religion is spreading the world. A professor of comparative religions wrote a book a few years ago. The title of his book, The Eight Leading Religions That Rule the World. And he, in order of strength in the world, number of people, power, influence, and so on. Yoruba religion is the sixth of the eight. And that's the only religion from Africa that is an international religion. Okay, so here we are. We have built all these great things, but we don't know how to handle politics somehow. Because when we start fighting among ourselves, we just keep fighting. And we don't look around us to see what is really happening to us. So today, in the 19th century, we fought wars, and we couldn't stop them. And Ibadan, thank God, for Ibadan. The Eloni people who are not Fulani at all, they were Muslims, but they were not Fulani. They were leading an army to conquer the whole of Yoruba land for Islam. So the Ibadan people met them in Oshobo in 1840 and soundly defeated the army, destroyed them. <laughs> and destroyed their cavalry and took captive the leading officers of the army who incidentally were all Yoruba. There were one or two Fulani in the lower levels and the Badan chief said, we have no problem with you, go back home. It is these ones who are our own people that we have trouble with. So they sent one to Oyo, to the present Oyo, where he was executed. They also executed another one in Ibadan. So this is the situation, but then Ibadan became big, Ibadan became great. That's where everybody wanted to come to. There was opportunity in Ibadan. And Ibadan wanted to unify the whole of Yoruba land by war. So they conquered many places. The only people left that they, were, they did not conquer were uh, These far southern peoples, like the Jebu, the uh, Ondo, uh, Owo, and so on. But Ekiti, uh, what is now Oshun, Igesha, uh, part, most of Igomina, and so on, they just ran over the place and created an empire and put Ajales everywhere. Then the Ekitis, you know who they are. They don't take, they didn't know how to handle it for a start. But then in 1877, they finally made up their mind to handle it. So one of their boys started trouble by killing the local Ajele. And the rest of the Kiti, then people revolted and drove the Ajeles out of their land and then created an army called the Kiti Parapo Army. And the war went on from 1877 until 1886. 
It is the peace treaty of that year, September 23, 1886, that we are celebrating today. So what is the significance of that treaty? It brought to an end in our land a whole century of troubles and wars. But here is another angle that you may not have heard before. Let me. As of that time, the British and the French and, the, and so on were already interested in uh, empires in Africa. But as of that moment, if we had joined hands to defend our land, we would never have become British colony. That's four years after that war, after the treaty, uh, uh, the Kirigi Treaty. Ibadan army had an army of about 80,000 men well armed on the Kirigi war front. They had made the treaty, but they had not gone home. They had an army of about 80,000 people in the Kirigi war front. The Ekiti had an, Ekiti Kwarako had an army of about 50,000. I want you to get a piece of paper and pencil and write these things down. Eloni, which I told you was mostly Yoruba, was Yoruba in command and everything, had a small army supporting the Ekitikwarako, maybe about 15,000 at the same place. At the same time, Ibadan had an army of about 35,000 in Oru fighting against the Ijebu. The Ijebu had in Oru an army of about 50,000. Are you adding these figures? The Ekiti Kwarapo had sent an army to go and protect Ife under Prince Fabumi of Okemesi and uh, uh, Ashif Arimaro from Elisha. And that army was about 25,000. The Jebu command, high command, had also sent an army to the defense of Ife under the Seriki Ogushigu. And his army was about 25,000. If we had put all of that together and we had said no white man enters our land, no, ma no white man would have entered our land. When the British attacked Ijebu Day in 1892, it is because they knew that the rest of us were not going to raise a finger to defend Ijebu Day. That's the lesson from Kirigi, from the 19th century, from the wars of the 19th century, from the strength that we built in the 19th century, from our whole history. A great nation stands still and let all sorts of smaller nations run over it. It is time that we began to take control of our lives. Oh, come, 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 come,